Hi everybody, I'm Jason. I'm Nicole. I'm Jaden. I'm Eli. And we are the Yahoo and the Torah channel and we thank you guys very much for extending our table to your table and for spending time with us as we go through the Law, Statutes, and Commands of our Creator. And the Law, Statutes, and Commands, what are they, Jade? They are the Torah. They are what we should be following every single day and they are still intact. Are they on the cross? No, they never said they were on the cross. The Messiah followed them. The disciples followed them. Everybody followed them. So if our leader is Messiah Yahushua, or as they say, Jesus, and there is no J's in Hebrew, it wasn't invented to the year 1529, the letter J, the actual physical letter J, so there was no possible way our Messiah's name could be Jesus. But if he kept them and your leader is Messiah Yahushua, Shouldn't we be following them? Yes, we strive to be just like the Messiah. We strive to do what the Messiah did, So, and he followed the Torah. So that's what we should strive to do. All right, and so we have 52 commands, and um, let's just begin into this. Let's do our handy-dandy split screen, and we will begin today. We're down one of our guys. Um, he's working, and they had a very early morning. So we're down, Cade, but we will deal with this and see what we can do. All right, so we are on Leviticus 8. And um, we've been doing all sorts of stuff prior to this. Jade, what have we been doing prior uh, to this? What, we, what? Ha we have been going over Levitical sacrifice, how the sacrifices work. When you do a certain sin, what kind of sacrifice you have to do? What do you have to bring? We've gone over peace offerings, guilt offerings, sin offerings, burnt offerings, wave offerings, and just offerings of all, all sorts. Right. Okay. And so, again, why is it that our Creator is having us do these things? Or did we do these things back in the day? This is for like when you sin or the repentance of sin. Right. Well, yeah, it's repentance of sin. Now, did this when they did this? Did this wash them clean? Were they mm -hmm. were they were they sinless at this point? Not completely. No. It was mostly a pardon for their sin. And it, so it it mostly appeases our Creator, whereas the blood of our Messiah Yahushua is what will actually break the curse of breaking the Torah. And the curse of breaking the Torah is what Eli? It is death. Yes, it is death. It is what kind of death? The second death going into the pit of fire. So is it called the physical or spiritual death? Spiritual death. Spiritual death. And so we are all bound to die one death. It's without a shadow of a doubt we're all going to um, probably find that grave. But we don't need to um, die a, a second death. And when we die out of covenant with our creator, it's a terrible place to be. If you read the book of Enoch, it's, it's a horrible, horrible place. Um, you're, you're pelted with fire. I think Ezra talks about, uh, I think it was even like fourth Ezra, it talks about like the, the worms that never, um, stop eating you. I think it was in Ezra. Do you guys remember what that said? I think it was Ezra, but I could have been, um, somewhere else. All right. So let's begin. Here we go. Leviticus 8. And Yahuwah spoke unto El Moshe, saying, Take Aaron and his sons with him, and the garments, and the anointing oil, a bullock for the sin offering, and two rams, and a basket of matzah. And gather all the assembly together unto the door of the tabernacle of the assembly. And Moshe did as Yahuwah commanded him, and the assembly was gathered together unto the door of the tabernacle of the assembly. And Moshe said unto the assembly, This is the thing which Yahuwah commanded to be done. And Moshe brought Aaron and his sons and washed them with water. Okay, so what does he just do? What is everybody doing? So he brought all the people together and then he washed Aaron and his sons. Right, so he brought everybody out. He brought everybody around him. So he's basically right? ordaining them to be the priests in front of all the people. Right, okay. And so, seven. And he put upon him the coat and girded him with the belt and clothed him with the robe and put the ephod upon him. And he girded him with the belt and the of the ephod and bound it unto him therewith. And he put the breastplate upon him. Also, he put in the breastplate the um, the Urimen and the Tumim. Tumim. What what is your guys? Mine say? says the Urim and the Tumim. Mm -hmm. Okay, Tumim perfections. And so, what are these, guys? What is the Umen or Urimum? Urim uh, says the or the oracular brilliancy of the figures in the high priest's breastplate. <clears throat> so Mine says the articles upon the high priest put his hands when seeking the divine will concerning the nation. Okay. Okay. So it might be the twelve stones in the front, maybe. Is that is that what that is? The 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 ermine. What does it just say up top? It says ermine too. And mm -hmm. ermine. Okay. Um. So we don't know exactly what that is. What does your say, Nicole? It it says the um and the thermin, but then it says articles upon which the high priest put his hand when seeking the divine when concerning the nation. Yeah. So he put it <clears throat> in the breastplate. So that must be it, right? So I think that is the. Uh, 
decorative stuff, right? Is oh, that attach the stones of the 12 tribes? Right. I think that's what it is, but I don't know. We're going to have to figure that one out. And he put the turban up on his head and also up on the turban, even up on his forefront, did he put the golden plate, the holy crown, as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. <coughs> Excuse me. And Moshe took the anointing oil and anointed the tabernacle and all that was therein and sanctified them. And he sprinkled thereof upon the altar seven times and anointed the altar and all his vessels, both the labor and his foot, to sanctify them. So there's that number again, seven times, which again, I would like to remind those who are not on the creator's calendar, we cannot do things outside of sevens, right? He's not going to have seven, like, like everything that we've done, it's about sevens and fifties. And he's not going to have you start a new year in the middle of a a week, right, a, or, or whatnot. Let's say you have, uh, you, you say you just decide that you, for whatever reason, your Shabbat's on a Sunday, right? Let's just say that. Um, and you think that you've come across the right calendar, right? But the next year, because you had to start your new year in the middle of the week, your, your Shabbat is on a Tuesday, right? So you would only have a two-day week. You're falling outside of the sevens of our creator, and that cannot be. So we have to figure out our calendars correctly. All right, and he sprinkled thereof upon the altar seven times. Did I ever do this one? Do I ever do seven? Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. All right, seven. I, I like that seven so much. I'm going on it. Okay, 12. And he poured of the anointed oil upon Aaron's head and anointed him to sanctify him. And Moshe brought Aaron's sons and put coats upon them and girded them with belts and put bonnets upon them as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. So what are your says for bonnets? For turbans? Turbans. Yeah, turbans. Um, okay. And he put the bullock for the sin offering, and Aaron, oh, and he brought, excuse me, and he brought the bullock for the sin offering, and Aaron and his sons laid their hands upon the head of the bullock for the sin offering. Okay, so there, this is this is where it gets gruesome, right? This is this is it. Everybody puts your hand on the thing as you cut its throat, and I believe you're draining a piece of the blood. Um, you're, you're draining into a bowl, right? And so I don't know how they get this thing to stand still or how they got it to not run away when you're cutting its throat. Um, I, maybe they tied it down. Um, but the pictures I've seen, it actually has the people standing around it and a bowl under it. And I don't know if those pictures were legit or if they were not or any of that stuff. All right, and they slew it. And Moshe took the blood and poured it upon the horns of the altar round about with his finger and purified the altar and poured the blood at the bottom of the altar and sanctified it to make reconciliation upon it. Now, we've gone down this path before and we 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 as human beings don't think that blood on stuff is, is, or at least I, I don't know, having blood on stuff doesn't seem very sanctified, doesn't seem very purified. So this is yet more understanding of our creator that we do not know and we do not understand, but it is by the blood of Messiah Yahushua that we are saved. And so the power is in the blood for real. And um, yeah, so anyway, they're, they, they're throwing blood everywhere. Excuse me. And he took all the fat that was up on the inwards and the call above the liver, and the two kidneys, and their fat, and Moshe burned it upon the altar. But the bullock and his hide, his flesh, and his dung, he burnt with fire without the camp, as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. So there's the skin, right? So there's the flesh on this, right? The hide. Right. And so that is one of the hides that we, we talked about in the last chapter. The hide became the, the Levitical priests. They, they right. got the hides. So this one, they don't get the hide. All right, it's only a certain offering. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he brought the ram for the ascending smoke offering, and Aaron and his sons laid their hands upon the head of the ram, and he killed it. And Moshe sprinkled the blood upon the altar round about. And he cut the ram into pieces, and Moshe burnt the head and the pieces and the fat. Okay, so it, this is a very this is a very short verse on this, and it's, it's, it doesn't give you guys any of the details. When you guys are, and I will tell you from experience here on killing cows and things and skinning them, it, you don't just cut them into pieces, right? This is a this is a full on job. This you don't things don't just fall into pieces. It doesn't fall into steak piles. That's no, a lot of work to cut something up. It is absolutely a tremendous amount of work, and so it's you know they said and he cut it in cut the ram into pieces. This was probably like thirty minutes later. They they had it completely done, or maybe they were quicker. Uh, maybe there's a few of them. Maybe a few minutes. Yeah, they're probably like wizards with the uh, not even wizards. That's, that's the wrong word. But they were masters at the um, at skinning things. All right. And he washed the inwards and the legs in water. And Moshe burnt the whole ram upon the altar. It was an ascending smoke 
uh, sacrifice for a sweet savor and an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. Now, this is interesting too, where he washes the inwards, right? He washes the inwards up. Um, it's when you skin an animal, there's all sorts of funky stuff on it, right? There's like, um, it's, it's just, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting that they took the, the, the dirty kind of looking meat and then they washed it and the legs and then they um, then they they put it on fire. They put it on things. So they actually wash this meat prior to putting it up there to where they would burn it. So it, it, everything had to be perfect. Everything had to be clean. It had to be as Yah wanted it done. Twenty two. And he brought the other ram, the ram of consecration. And Aaron and his sons laid their hands upon the head of the ram, and he slew it. And Moshe took of the blood of it and put it upon the tip of Aaron's right ear and upon the thumb of his right hand and upon the great toe of his right foot. Okay, so this went on to his, uh, it's on the right side, air tip of right ear, it goes to the right ear, blood goes on the uh, right thumb, and then it goes on the big toe of the right foot. So that's, that's very interesting stuff. And he brought Aaron's sons and Moshe put of the blood upon the tip of their right ear and upon the thumbs of their right hands and upon the great toes of their right feet and Moshe sprinkled the blood upon the altar round about and he took the fat and the rump and all the fat that was up on the inwards and the call above the liver and the two kidneys and the, their fat and the right shoulder and out of the basket of matzah that was before Yahuwah he took one matzah cake and a cake of oiled bread and one wafer and put them on the fat and up on the right shoulder and he put up, put all up on Aaron's hands and upon his son's hands and waved them for a wave offering before Yahuwah. All right, so I'm trying to stay on task here. Um, so one out of the mat, I'm trying to figure out what just happened. Jay, do you, did you understand this? Yeah, so basically there's, he put blood on their ears and hands, then he gave them all like their food, like the cakes he put in their hands. He gave them all their food, like all their anointing, their unleavened cake, and their... Uh, Took the fat and the rump and the fat and the... But he put it on the actual, what, the ram that they're burning? He put the cakes on there. He didn't give them to, to them. He put the cakes on that. Uh-huh. He took it up and put a cake of oiled bread. So even, even... So this is what I was talking about, what you, Jade had to take off. The, right after they slaughtered the animal, he's taking a chunk of meat and he's washing that chunk of meat. Then they're sticking it on the altar, right? So instead of having, instead, you know, and uh, most of you guys out there probably will not understand what we're talking about, but we're, it's very familiar to us cutting up things. And um, as gruesome as it is, it's, it's, it's part necessary. of, yeah, it's part of jungle life. I mean, it's just the way it is. Um, and so he washed the, he washed this stuff and then he's taking oiled bread right so this isn't just like you're not you're not being cheap right you're 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 literally putting a fine meal on this altar and you're providing it to yah in the way that he wants it so again that goes to question is where is yah exactly i mean is he somewhere out in the middle of nowhere and, and he's now not watching his people or is he right above us which is more than likely seeing what what we're all about all right all right so and he put all put all upon Aaron's hands and upon his son's hands and waved them for a wave offering before Yahuwah. Okay, so he put all upon Aaron's hands. So I don't know how much all is. Did he take, is this after it's cooked? It so, doesn't specifically say, to be honest. It doesn't say, but, you know, so basically it doesn't say, but then I don't, I don't understand this exactly. This is the wave offering. So I think first he did the burnt offering. Right. And hey. now he's doing the wave offering. So it's like different pieces of it. So maybe this is... So it's not... I don't think it's cooked yet because this is like the wave offering. So I don't know how big this would be, but whatever its size it is, he puts it all upon Aaron's hands and upon his son's hands and waved them for an offering before Yahuwah. Now go to 28. Okay. And Moshe took them from off their hands and burnt them on the fire upon the ascending smoke offering. For they were consecrations for a sweet savor. It is an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah. So it yeah. wasn't cooked yet. So it wasn't cooked. And so basically he stacked the stuff up somehow on the altar. And then he sticks it on Aaron's and his son's hands. And they wave it before Yahuwah. Then they cook it. Um, okay. Let's do 29. And Moshe took the breast and waved it for a wave offering before Yahuwah. 
For of the ram of consecration, it was Moshe's part, as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. And Moshe took of the anointing oil and of the blood which was upon the altar and sprinkled it upon Aaron and his garments and upon his sons and upon his sons' garments with him and sanctified Aaron and his garments and his sons and his sons' garments with him. So the, the, the way of atonement is to be covered in blood at some level. I mean, this is what you're saying here, right? So, I mean, he spring how much, again, we don't know how much of it do you sprinkle on there. You know, I've seen some pictures of it where they have like a, a, a uh, I don't even know. It's like, hyssop. yeah, like a hyssop. And it's just like a, a, it looks like a broom, an end of a broom almost. And then they, they toss it out there. I don't know if it's a tremendous amount of blood because, I mean, these, their clothes, what, were, what color were the clothes? Weren't they white? I think they were white and bluish. White and blue. So they would be white and I mean, red. They would have to clean their clothes pretty fast before it like, completely destroyed their clothes. And you're going to start smelling bad. After a while, you're going to have blood all over you. And it's, it's, it's at a level. I mean, blood reeks. It's not good. Um, 31. Okay, and Moshe said unto El Elron and his sons, Boil the flesh at the door of the tabernacle of the assembly, and there eat it with the bread that is in the basket of consecrations, as I commanded, saying, Elron and his sons shall eat it. Okay, okay. Wait, yours says boil, mine says cook. Okay, boil, cook. So. I think it'd probably be more like cooked than boiled. It would be. What's this king say? King's usually with this. And uh, where are we at, 31? Boil in that one, and then NIV it says cook. Mine says I think, as I think, well. I so, think it would be cooked, to be honest. Well, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's really going on here. Um, very interesting translation stuff here. Um, but let's see, where was I saying on this? Uh, I had a thought, and it might have gone. Uh, that's going to be commanded. Aaron and his son shall eat it. Okay, I, I don't know where I was going with that, but we'll continue on. 32. And that which remains of the flesh and of the bread shall ye burn with fire. And ye shall not go out of the door of the tabernacle of the assembly in seven days until the days of the consecration be at an end. For seven days he shall consecrate you. Okay, this was a thought. I, it came back to it. Okay, so basically he went. He did this at the door of the tabernacle of the assembly, right? So this was still in front of all the people. So he's cooking this up. This was like a ceremony, right? Mm -hmm. right. Everybody's doing a ceremony. And then right in front of all the people is how they are doing this. And so then it gets a little... I don't say weirder, but it gets a little, these guys are, are stuck here for seven days. Um, and ye shall not go out of the door of the tabernacle of the assembly in seven days until the days of your consecration be at an end. For seven days shall he consecrate you. And he has done this day, and he has done this day, so Yahuwah has commanded to do, to make an atonement for you. Therefore shall ye abide at the door of the tabernacle of the assembly day and night, seven days. And guard the watch of Yahuwah that ye die not, for I am, for so I am commanded. And again, for all the lunar keepers out there that are, you know, jumping around, these guys, these guys were in, they, they were commanded to be here for seven days, right? Imagine if you were in a cycle and your, your year started over and you were, you, you would only, this wouldn't work out. You couldn't be here or for this. Because they or had certain things that they did on each day. Right. Yeah, it, would, it wouldn't work out. We have to be in cycles of seven, is what I have come to believe. All right, 36. So Aaron and his sons did all things which Yahuwah commanded by the hand of Moshe. All right, so I do not think that we have any commandments. Um, I still am haunted by Leviticus 5. I do not believe that we have figured this one out as of yet. And um, I still have not found the commandments. So today, a little bit, I'm going to read Leviticus 5 again. So it's fresh in my memory. So we do not forget this because I do not want to be scrubs when it comes to getting these commandments down. All right, everybody. Um, that is about it. We have a busy day. And everybody out there, we, I know you guys have a busy day. And thank you guys so much for spending time with us, taking your time out of your day with us. Uh, much love to everybody out there. We appreciate you. Love you guys. And, um, yeah, I'm sure y'all loves you guys as well. And definitely Messiah Yahushua loves you guys. And um, it's one day it's going to be a giant, big family. We're going to have a heyday uh, once all these devils and demons are gone out of our lives. So until then, uh, I guess that is it. Um, you know, any words? Anyone else? Yeah, read your Bible and uh, read the Torah. What we're supposed to do. Learn it and write it upon your hearts. If you guys listen along with read along with us, so you guys can write it upon your hearts as well. Yes, and I'm missing my main wingman, Mr. Caden. He uh, is the guy that actually talks with me. I got Nicole sitting next to me now on this one. Uh, but Cade does the best when he talks, and that's what we're looking for is we're looking for interaction. Right, Eli? Right. Right. Come over here. Anything you have? Anything else to bring to these guys, Cookie? Um, just 
Read your Bibles. Read your Bibles. All right. Enjoy your tea. Enjoy, enjoy <laughs> your tea, not caffeine. Enjoy your tea. Caffeine kills you. All right, guys. Much love. We're out. Right. So long. So long.